The theory of NKT is based on motor control theory, which says that all patterns in the body are stored in a part of the cerebellum called the motor control center. And the motor control center is controlled by the limbic system and the higher part of the, of the cerebrum. They direct actions to the motor control center, which then formulates everything and creates movement patterns. Now, that's interesting to us because dysfunctional movement patterns get created just as easily as functional movement patterns. And what we want to do if we find a dysfunctional movement pattern is to correct it so that it becomes functional again. And the motor control center learns through failure. In fact, our whole brain learns through failure. So we have to get a failure to happen that the motor control center recognizes. It will then open up for about 30 to 60 seconds, in which time we can reprogram it with new information. The way we get it to fail is through manual muscle testing. Manual muscle testing comes from physical therapy, and it's a way to assess the strength or the weakness of a muscle. And that's what we'll be going over a lot today is how to do these manual muscle tests. Now, in regular manual muscle testing technique, there's only <coughs> one way to test a muscle, maybe two. Uh, with neurokinetic therapy, we can tailor the angles of the muscle test, whether it be in flexion or extension, or different rotations of the joint to create muscle tests that uh, directly affect certain fibers of the muscle. So in other words, the, the bicep may be strong in this position, but it may be weak in this position, and, and if you only test it in this position, you will, won't get the information that you need to get. So being very specific with muscle testing allows us to do this work. Another thing I want you to remember is how much pressure you're using when you're muscle testing, okay? Uh, the pressure, there are three different kinds of pressure. One is a very light pressure, which gives you a neural response. So a very light pressure lights up the, the muscle, it gets the nerve going, and it just lets you know if that muscle is on or off. Then there's a medium pressure, which we use to test for strength. And finally, a much harder pressure which allows you to test for not only strength, but stamina. So obviously, if somebody's muscle is, is really, really off, really, really weak, if you test it really hard, what the body will do is compensate, and all kinds of muscles will tighten up. So you'll see, when you're testing each other, when if you test somebody too hard, you'll notice that they'll clench their jaw, they'll hold their breath, and other muscles in the body will tighten up as you suspect as you test. So if you see that, that means you're testing too hard. That's not a good thing. You don't want to create other compensations. Now what's interesting about doing that is if you test too hard, uh, you will sometimes have the dysfunctional patterns or the compensation patterns show up while you're testing. So if somebody is weak in a certain test and you notice that they clench their jaw or hold their breath, that's probably some pattern that you want to remember so that you can address it later. Okay, that makes sense to everybody? Right. Now, once we've assessed what muscles are working and what aren't working, then we have to do something about it, and that's the 30 to 60 second uh, range I was talking about. And in that 30 to 60 seconds, you have a number of things that you can do. You all have certain techniques that you know to do releases. There's stretching, active isolated stretching, there's uh, massage release techniques that you can use. There are many, many different things. We'll go over that uh, a little bit later. And then once that, once that release happens, then you retest the muscle that was weak. And if it tests strong, then you've successfully reprogrammed the motor control center. And you can challenge that by testing it again. If it tests strong, then yes, you have successfully done the work.
course, that will be part of the demonstration today. The way to burn that into the brain is to assign very specific rehabilitative exercises once you've done that corrective work. And the exercise that you assign the person is one, is, it, it resembles the test that was weak. So if the, again, if the bicep was weak in this position, you would then have your client do bicep curls that would emphasize the beginning part of the flexion, okay? As opposed to doing something up here, all right? What's really important with this work is to specifically tailor the exercises to your client. And I think that's what really distinguishes this work is that you're not just giving cookie cutter exercises, um, which in my experience quite often are fail miserably. So Pilates people, you're working here uh, in the gym, there are tons of equipment and you know and stuff you can do on reformer and mat work and whatnot that you can really specifically tailor to your client that you will get much better results.